And welcome back, my fellow lost souls, to Let's Play Silent Hill 2. Last time, Maria died. Again. And we are at the end of the labyrinth with another hole to jump into. Not at all ominously a grave. Let's do so. You may notice I'm equipping the steel pipe, and that is because we want it for a boss fight that is coming up, so get excited for that. We seldom used melee weapons in this game. In fact, I can't remember a time I seriously used one beyond the initial fight with the lying figure after we got the wooden plank. Did I use it once in the uh, hospital? I think I did. Not that it matters too much, but here is an actual legitimately uh, serious use for melee weapons, after a cutscene of course. Eddie, what are you doing? What does it look like? He always busted my balls. You fat, disgusting piece of shit. You make me sick. Fat ass, you're nothing but a waste of skin. You're so ugly, even your mama don't love you. Well, maybe he was right. Maybe I am nothing but a fat, disgusting piece of shit. But you know what? It doesn't matter if you're smart, dumb, ugly, pretty. It's all the same once you're dead. And the corpse can't laugh. From now on, if anyone makes fun of me, I'll kill him. Just like that. Have you gone nuts? I knew it. You too. You're just like him, James. Hey, I didn't mean anything. Don't bother. I understand. You've been laughing at me all along, haven't you? Ever since we first met. I'll kill you, James. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. And after that, that Looney Tunes ass first phase of the fight is over. Yes, Eddie has gone postal, and we have to put him down because James rather foolishly uh, triggered him by. Uh, <laughs> implying that he is insane, which, uh, you know, he's a little, he's a little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs at the moment. Now, one thing I want to note about that strategy that I just did with the steel pipe, it does not work in the PC version. In the PC version, the physics for the game are ever so slightly different. In general, melee weapons do a little bit less knockback and enemies move a little bit faster, so you can't loop Eddie with the heavy strike from the steel pipe in the PC version. That is a console exclusive strategy. Not that it matters too much, because there's is another strategy you can employ with melee weapons that works just as well, or you can just take a step forward, let him punch you, and then hit him with the executioner swing from the great knife, and that works too. But with that said and done, let's get into the next room and continue on to phase two of the fight. Also, I'd just like to say I love that delivery on, and a corpse can't laugh. I think the actors in this game sometimes really do knock it out of the park. Think it's okay to kill people? 
You need help, Eddie. Don't get a holy on me, James. This town called you too. You and me are the same. We're not like other people. Don't you know that? Let's party! Immediately strafe right when the fight starts. Now uh, Eddie will actually more seriously fire that gun at us. And what we want to do is uh, kind of play around these meat racks and uh, let Eddie come in to try and punch us. And he will accidentally hit the racks instead. So we can nail him with the great knife if we play around these racks. Kind of got a little careless there and let him hit me, but we just want to maneuver around the beef and let him uh, accidentally uh, punch it. Now, one thing to note is that this strategy is actually a lot more effective on the PC version. Like I said, uh, melee weapons in the PC version, they do ever so slightly less knockback. Whoop. Ah was poking out a little bit too much, letting him get a shot off at me. Those shots are no joke. They deal about 25% uh, of your health and damage, so we'll just immediately uh, recover that with a first aid kit. But uh, the melee weapons deal a lot less knockback in the PC version, so uh, Eddie barely gets uh, thrown off at all by the Great Knife, and you can just uh, whack him repeatedly while he will just uh, attempt to punch the racks of beef. And I'm actually pretty lucky here because he got stuck in this version too. Let him punch, and we can easily avoid that by just backing up a little bit. Now that he's low on health, Eddie will start uh, fleeing us. So this is uh, the point where we want to pull out the handgun and start chasing him down to uh, finish him off. So let's see if I can't catch him. Okay, just let him go into there. Come on. Yep, oh, whoops. Oh, he got his own shot off in retaliation. So yeah, this it's a little tricky to uh, hit him without him uh, hitting you in return. Let's uh, quickly reload our gun. But he's almost dead at this point, so... Yeah, he's now working the beef too. It's like Rocky Balboa. Okay, let's uh, go into our menu here. If I can just get a clear shot at him. Let's there we go. Eddie? Eddie? I... I killed a... a human being. A human being. Mary. Did you really die three years ago? And with the weight of what James had done hitting him, he has a very ominous question there. But that is Eddie, dead and gone, and uh, his grave has been properly filled now. Hopefully this doesn't imply anything bad for Angela. Now, one thing to note that's kind of interesting is that Eddie is the only enemy in this game that is actually not counted in your score for uh, enemy kills in the end game ranking, which is kind of interesting, I think, since uh, it's the one uh, thing that James kills that actually affects him in this game, which is kind of just amusing to me. I guess it's because he's not technically a monster, so he, the game doesn't count him. We want to just uh, re-equip our shotgun. And you may have forgotten why we, where we were trying to get to. We were trying to get to the uh, Lakefront Hotel, and this dock is just on the other side of it. And conveniently, we've got a canoe. Now, this canoe is uh, a contributor to one of the more infamous mechanic changes in hard mode. On normal and easy mode, this thing is just as simple as you uh, use your analog, your left analog stick to maneuver the boat and then steer it forward to the direction you want to go. On hard mode, it does not work out like that at all. Instead, it has a completely new control scheme revol revolving around using both analog sticks. You have to rotate both analog sticks simultaneously. To move forward, you, you move the left stick counterclockwise and the right stick uh, 
clockwise at the same time. And if you want to do a hard turn to the right, like we want to do at the start here, you have to start rotating both sticks counterclockwise, and that will start turning James. And the reason we want to make a hard turn to the right, which hopefully it'll come into view soon, I might have to do a little bit more turning. Yeah, there it is. A oh, uh, little bit, but that's okay. We can just do a quick adjustment. But uh, you want to uh, get that light to just a little bit, as best you can, behind James' head. But if you're going to be off from it, you want to be a little bit off to uh, the right of it, with the behind James's head to the left. If it's behind James's head to the right of him, uh, you will uh, miss the dock that it is connected to. And now that we're mostly lined up, we can just uh, go forward and call it a day. Now, the reason I mentioned in the previous video is that you want a PS2 controller that supports true analog is because this control scheme does not work properly on controllers that have uh, not true analog digital where it only recognizes eight directions. It is it, Those controllers are incapable of recognizing the full range of motion that is needed for the counterclockwise and clockwise rotations that you're supposed to make. And consequently, uh, at best, you'll move at half the speed you can manage if you had a proper controller for this. So yeah, if you uh, are playing on the PS2 version or the Xbox version, make sure they have a controller that supports true analog. Uh, if you're playing on the PC version, uh, the PC version uses the same control scheme across all difficulties, so it actually does not matter. And it's one of several ways that getting a max ranking on the PC version is a lot easier, because for whatever reason, you are ranked on your time for this boat trip. You need to get to the dock in under one minute and 20 seconds, and if you fail that, you do not get a max ranking. It's very simple. Yeah, given the rest of the town, it is kind of strange that the hotel seems exactly as it was when James remembers coming here. Now, this video is probably going to run a little long, which you may or may not have noticed from the time, depending on how quickly I do this, but uh, we're going to do all of the hotel in a single video, so quite a bit to get to. Before you enter the hotel, you want to make sure to turn to the left and go to that fountain in order to pick up the Little Mermaid music box. Now, heading into the hotel proper, and I just bonk the wall. Always good to do that. As soon as we enter, off to our left, we will find a guest map of the Lakeview Hotel waiting for you. So I guess room 312, yeah, that's the room Mary and James stayed in. Well, hopefully, she is there waiting for us. But yes, this is a guest map of the hotel. So any area that is employee only, we actually cannot see it on this map. Now, speaking of employee-only areas, we're actually going to go into one right off the start. Is it this door? No, it's the next one down. Nothing too important in here, but there is some ammo to grab, plus a couple enemies, if you are interested in taking them down. So, we're just going to do some quick stomps here. You can uh, take a dirt nap also. And inside this little supply closet, we will find a bunch of ammunition. Rifle shells, always nice, except I don't really care, honestly. Oh, is there more? Handgun bullets. Definitely could use more of those, even though I'm probably not going to use the handgun for the rest of the game, but if you're playing on a New Game Plus and you want to employ a certain strategy for a boss that's coming up, I suppose having handgun ammo couldn't hurt. Of course, if you're playing on New Game Plus, you're going to have bullet adjust times three on, so you're going to have more handgun ammo than you know what to do with. Now, we're going into the basement real quick. It's not critical that you come down here right now, but we may as well get what we need out of the way can get a can of thinner. What could we possibly need paint thinner for? Well, just wait and see. Jeez, you're so impatient. We've got puzzles to get to. Just let them come in good time. I, I tease, I tease. I'm just being a comedic jerk for the sake of it. Now, we want to head into the restaurant at the end of the hall here. 
Heading into this restaurant, go into the back, and we will see on this table, not a fish dinner, but a fish key. Eh, good enough, I suppose. All right, let's get out of here. Did I scare you? Yeah, you did. You're here to find Mary, aren't you, James? Well, have you? No. Is that why you're here, too? She's here, isn't she? If you know where she is, tell me. I'm tired of walking. I wish I knew. But she said it in her letter. What letter? Wanna read it? But don't tell Rachel, okay? Who's Rachel? She was our nurse. I took it from her locker. My dearest Laura, I'm leaving this letter with Rachel to give you after I'm gone. I'm far away now, in a quiet, beautiful place. Please forgive me for not saying goodbye before I left. Be well, Laura. Don't be too hard on the sisters. And Laura, about James, I know you hate him because you think he isn't nice to me, but please give him a chance. It's true he may be a little surly sometimes, and he doesn't laugh much, but underneath he's really a sweet person. Laura, I love you like my very own daughter. If things had worked out differently, I was hoping to adopt you. Happy 8th birthday, Laura. Your friend forever, Mary. Laura, how old are you? Um, I turned eight last week. So, Mary couldn't have died three years ago. Could, could she really be here? Is this the quiet, beautiful place she was talking about? Me and Mary talked a lot about Silent Hill. She even showed me all her pictures. She really wanted to come back. That's why I'm here. Maybe you'll get it if you see the other letter. The one, Mary. Huh? I must have dropped it. Laura. I gotta find it. Laura. So yeah, a serious plot reveal there. Mary p couldn't possibly have died three years ago. In fact, she couldn't have died more than a week ago because, well, Laura just turned eight. So let's see. Drawing of done by Laura seems to be a cat. That is an interesting letter. I mean, let's just compare that to the letter that we got from Mary uh, when we first came here. Huh? That is bizarre. But yes, after you kill Eddie, Mary's letter, the text on it, disappears. It is no longer there. I wonder what that could possibly mean. Heading out into the hallway, we immediately want to turn and start firing our shotgun. Oh, jeez. Come on. Ah! Knew I'd screw that up, of course. But yes, we've got abstract daddies to deal with. Oh, dear. This guy's eating me to death. Okay, let's back up a little bit. Uh, these guys uh, appear as a demoted enemy. So let's uh, use up a few of our health drinks there. So we just want to uh, blast them with the shotgun repeatedly. So it looks like that one's already dead. But there is a second one. Oh, jeez. Why didn't my radio not go off? Oh, boy. This is going terrible. Alright, let's just blast him repeatedly. Is he dead? Okay. That was the worst I've ever had that go, and I was uh, not reacting properly to that at all. But yes, we can find a few abstract daddies around this hotel. Ugh. Knew I'd screw that up. Oh, well, it's not a huge deal. Anyway, heading into the main foyer area. First thing to note when we come in here is that there is some kind of ornate music box in the center. Looks like it's got some uh, indentations for it. Even so, I still want to believe she was happy. Let's give it a play. Hmm. Sounds like you're missing a few no notes there. Hmm. 
But this is the central puzzle for this area. We need to get three music boxes to place in the indentations so that we can play the complete tune. Now let's head over here. Checking on this desk. Let's see here. Mr. James Sunderland, the videotape you forgot here is being kept in the office on the first floor. So, looks like uh, that videotape that Maria mentioned uh, was left behind and was indeed kept by the hotel staff. So, uh, we'll have to find out what's on that tape. Now, coming into here, we got the room to key 312. Alright, that's convenient. Let's get straight up to that room and see if Mary is waiting for us there to get to the stairwell that allows us to access room 312. We just want to go up the stairs here and hang a right. And again, immediately to our right, there will be stairs leading up. So let's just go up here, see if we can't get into the room, see if our videotape is still there. Or what, did they say it was an employee room? Yeah, whatever. Uh, of course. So yeah, the third floor is shuttered off, so we can't actually go there yet. Well, let's just go and... Huh? Did you guys hear something? Hmm. That must be in my imagination. So, yeah, not only do we have to, uh, or we have to find the key to that uh, shuttered gate. Now, heading down here, there is some ammo awaiting us on the end table. And in here is a library, which also has ammunition for us in it. Because where else would you expect to find in the library? Books? Hardly. So, some shotgun shells. A health drink to replace the plentiful health drinks that I've been using. Hey, some kind of medical book. Looks like James has kind of lost faith in just studying. He uh, was not able to get the answers he sought just by reading up on the relevant subjects. Boy, look at all this shotgun ammo we have. Like I said, uh, once we get out of the hospital, you end up getting more shotgun ammo than you could ever reasonably hope to use. Especially if you're going for uh, stomp kills on enemies. It's just a ridiculous amount of shotgun ammo. And even more. Plus some handgun bullets. Good stuff. Now what do we got over here? Hmm. Got a locked suitcase. Now, I'm not exactly sure how you're supposed to realize this, but I guess just through trial and error, you're supposed to realize you got a key that doesn't seem to work on anything else, and you got a locked suitcase here, so use the fish key on it. And we get a room key, hotel room 204, which conveniently is just around the corner from this uh, little uh, employee reception area. Not sure why they have a second reception area on the second floor, but whatever. Who am I to question it? It's not like I, I've ever run a hotel before. I haven't. And we got more abstract daddies here, so let me do this correctly this time. A second one is going to be approaching from the end of the hallway, but it'll usually get hung up on the one that's uh, towards the front. And it'll either turn around or it'll just stay stuck. Let's quickly reload our shotgun here. Like I said, we got plenty of shotgun ammo, so we can just blast these guys. And he is toast. Alright, good stuff. Now room 204 is this one right here. Better make sure to reload my shotgun. Don't want to be caught unawares with it unloaded. In this room, in this uh, table here, we got an employee elevator key, but also... Boy, this, uh, this area is not at all up to code. Now we've got a locked suitcase with a uh, combination lock on it, and on this bed... We have a photo that is smudged out. Oh, it's a good thing we've got some uh, paint thinner. We gotta apply this very carefully so we don't damage the photo. Well, I suppose it's a Polaroid, so it probably does not matter. Hmm, lose. Unfortunate code. That code is random every time, so you do need to collect the thinner and clear the photo to see what it is. Funnily enough, one of the passwords is the uh, incredibly ingenious password open. Sorry, got a little bit of hiccups going on. But let's open this up. You ever have the problem where you're trying to type the word lose and you accidentally type lost instead? I do that a lot. And I'm not sure why my brain wants to do that. Anyways, we can unlock room 205 and get the heck out of here. That is all we need to do in this area now. Don't have to come back here anytime soon. Or technically ever, but we'll get to that, we'll get to that. 
All right, so now we want to cross the hallway. The employee elevator area is on the opposite side of the second floor, so let's just run on past. Fortunately, no more enemies here, and uh, those last two abstract daddies we shot, those are the last, that's the last time you ever see that enemy in the game. There are no more to kill after this point. Get a health drink here, and some rifle shells here. That is not the employee elevator. The employee elevator is in this area right here. Heading into this area, we got a couple more health drinks to pick up, and I highly recommend that you fully heal yourself uh, before going forward. Let's go into this elevator. Ah, jeez, what the heck is that sound? Eh, well, probably doesn't matter. Let's just uh, get on our on our way. We can go to the first floor with this. Hmm. Not working. Hmm. Oh. Well, unfortunately, James is carrying about 600 pounds of weaponry on his personage, and that's just no good for uh, trying to get on the elevator. Now, humorously enough, James must be like at just the right weight that even an ounce will put him over the weight limit for that elevator, which makes it sound like kind of a useless elevator because it's not like James is fat or anything. You have to store literally everything from the great knife to even the photo of Mary, something that doesn't even weigh anything. It's pretty silly. But the idea is clear. You need to stow everything so that James is going into the next section of the hotel completely unarmed. Now this is scary, and this intimidated me a lot when I played this when I was only 13. Uh, but it is not at all a big deal. It is just a minor inconvenience. But to err on the side of caution, it is a good idea to make sure you're fully healed before going down here. So, yep, we've got a no-gear section. Isn't that grand? Remember when I was, uh, when I was a teenager, I was playing this at, uh, some relative's house, and, uh, one of my cousin's friends came up, and he really did not understand how this game worked, and he said, well, if you're having trouble getting past the enemies in this area, why don't you go to a different area and kill them and take their guns? And I had a very hard time getting the idea across to him that this is not the kind of game where you kill people and take their guns. Anyway... Over here in the employee uh, lounge area, or what is this? this? Is an office? Yeah, it's an office. In this office area, there is one thing for us to grab. Well, technically two, but they're in the same area. Inside the safe, we find the mysterious missing videotape. And somewhat less mysterious, we find a can opener. I couldn't possibly imagine what we could use that for. Besides cans, of course, but you know, like, why would we need to open cans? Is James going to get hungry for soup? Well, I mean, it's not outside the realm of possibility. Unlike Eddie, he hasn't eaten anything. And again, maybe if he hadn't eaten the pizza, maybe he'd still be alive. I have no idea what my logic is with saying that. Inside this little lounge area, there's some rifle bullets to grab. I have a good supply of those at our disposal, and I'm probably never going to use them. Uh, like, it's kind of just hard to explain, uh, but the rifle is awful, and I really don't want to risk my life and limb demonstrating it. Here we get the Snow White music box, and now, once we get back to our gear, we have all three music boxes that we need to complete the music box in the foyer. Our only way out is to take this, uh, emergency staircase down into the basement. I guess, technically, it's not an emergency staircase. You can't, uh, get to an exit from it. Uh, this, uh, this maintenance staircase, I guess? It's not something I'd imagine, uh, hotel guests using, is the point I'm trying to make. Inside this area, we do have enemies to worry about, but thankfully, they are just weak mannequins. We can just brush past them, not even worry about them at all. First order of business is to head into the extremely loud boiler area. Boy, it's like, uh, it's like The Shining in here. And, uh, by the boiler, we find a key strung up. So it's kind of reminding me of uh, the boiler you wake up in in Silent Hill 1 after you defeat the uh, split head lizard. Heading into here, we just uh, take a right. There's another uh, mannequin just off camera. Let it activate, then push past it. As you can see, no big problem there. Inside the kitchen, we of course find plenty of protein drinks for us to take, so uh, good for uh, James to work on his gains. But here it is, the fabled can of which you need an opener in order to crack. Cans without labels? Uh, good God, no, I hope not. All right, let's uh, crack this thing open. Get some uh, dinty more stew. Or some light bulbs. Now, this is definitely one of the more esoteric uh, puzzle moments in Silent Hill 2, I will admit. But yeah, for some reason, there is a big steel or tin soup can with light bulbs in it. 
Anyways, uh, that is not the silliest uh, puzzle in this game. The silliest is about to come up right now. Uh, let's uh, use that bar key and get out of here. Uh, God, be kidding me, James. Look at that, that, that jukebox there. You can totally see it from the neon glow off of that. But no, James will not do it unless he has a flashlight focused on that door. So we can use our light bulb, and now James is able to see the lock. Yeah, that one is... I, I don't even know why they really bothered with that. It's just kind of stupid, honestly. In here, we got a few more mannequins. Now, one thing to note about these mannequins is that they actually spawn after you get the fish key from the restaurant. So if you so desire, you can actually kill them after uh, the cutscene with Laura. Save yourself a little bit of trouble on the way back from uh, the first floor or the basement. But uh, it really wasn't necessary. As you can see, it was no problem to push past them. Now we want to head back up to the second floor. This stairwell connects to uh, the uh, second floor reception area. You could also come here, but I wanted to grab the room 312 key and show off the music box. So I decided to go into the foyer when we first left the restaurant. But from a practical standpoint, it's probably more efficient to go up that staircase. Heading into here, there's going to be a couple more mannequins waiting for us in front of the employee elevator. But once again, just let them activate and then just go into the room. And we can get all of our stuff back. Now, funnily enough, once you do actually have your gear back and you can kill those things, they disappear completely. They were literally just there to make it a little bit more scary getting back to the employee elevator area. And we're actually making really good time. I was worried this would be like a 40 minute video, but we're just about done with what we need to do here. Now to solve the music box puzzle. So you probably noticed uh, all of the music boxes that we've gotten based on uh, fairy tale women uh, or Disney princesses if you prefer, which you know, I'm being kind of facetious there. You probably recognize them as Disney princesses. And on the music box indentations, there is an engraving. So we have to figure out which princess this engraving uh, correlates to. Uh, on the easy difficulty, it actually does not matter which princess you put in which uh, indentation. Uh, every indentation says the same thing and you can put them anywhere. Uh, the hints are a lot more straightforward on normal mode. In this one, you have to be familiar with the story. Now, even so, I wanted to believe she was still happy. If you remember Little Mermaid, Ariel traded her voice in order to gain the ability to live on land with the man that she loved. Or at the very least, the man that she was fascinated with. So we can kind of imagine that that might be applying to her. Now, if you are not clear enough on that, the other hints are a little bit more easy to parse if you uh, are familiar with the stories. Now this one, Twas Shameful Greed Did Stain Her Shoe With Blood. Uh, the normal mode hint is a one that would be very obvious to someone who's seen the Disney movie, where this is the seat of the princess who fled at midnight, of course. Cinderella fled the ball at midnight because the uh, enchantment the fairy godmother placed on her was running out at that point. But, in the original story, after the prince reclaimed the glass slipper and went around trying to try it on, the wicked stepmother, desperate to uh, get her daughters to marry into wealth and not let it be Cinderella, she mutilated the, foots, uh, the feet of her daughters, uh, slicing off the toe of one and the heel of, other, of the other, which caused, of course, the glass slipper to fill with blood when they tried to put it on. Not really worth uh, crippling your daughters for life, but whatever. I'm sure it seemed like a good idea at the time. There, we can place the Cinderella music box. And this one, no, no, we don't want to take the music box. This one right here. Beauty, both a blessing, blessing and a curse thou be. Of course, uh, if you're familiar with the story of Snow White, Snow White was deemed to be the fairest of all the land and the wicked queen of the land cursed her for that, putting her into an eternal sleep. You know, at least until a kiss broke it. And now with all of the boxes placed, Nice little musical tune plays, and we get the hotel stairway key. Beautiful. 
But I think that's where we're gonna end this video. We've got quite a few cutscenes to get through in the next video and the end of the game. That's right, we are at the end. So next time it will be the final video of our first playthrough of Silent Hill 2. But far from the end of the Let's Play, as there's plenty of content for me to show off. We haven't even looked at the PC version yet, so there's still quite a bit left to go. But for the mainline story, next video is going to be the last one, so get excited for that. As always, I hope you enjoyed watching, and I hope to see you in that next video. Until then, though, goodbye.